We have learned that there is a lot of variability in the oceans, but during the recent decades, the human influence on the oceans becomes stronger and stronger. And some people talk already about the Anthropocene, so a new era we are entering where humans have actually an impact on the Earth system and especially on the ocean that is comparable to the impact of the natural forcings. Now, the main problem here is that we produce energy by burning fossil fuels, so by burning coal, by burning oil, and by burning natural gas. And if we do that, we produce vast amounts of carbon dioxide, CO2. And CO2 is known to be a greenhouse gas, so it warms the atmosphere, it leads to global warming. So some part of the CO2 that we emit into the atmosphere remains there for many, many decades. But another part is taken up by the vegetation, so by the plants. That's about a quarter. And another quarter is taken up by the oceans. Now, let us start with the 50% that remains in the atmosphere, because that produces global warming. And global warming means not only that the land areas warm, but also that the oceans warm. And we can actually measure the ocean warming down to several hundred meters. So it's a big volume, actually, that warms in response to anthropogenic climate change, as we say. Now, this also leads to changing ocean currents. And the changing ocean currents lead to regional variations in the warming pattern. So if we look at the warming pattern, say, during the recent 50 years or so, uh, we don't see you know, that all areas warmed in the same manner, but we see a lot of regional variations. And actually, there are a few regions on this planet which haven't really warmed at all, while other regions, like the Arctic, has warmed much more than the global average temperature. So about 90%, 90% of the additional energy that has been produced by the increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere has winded up in the ocean. So the oceans have taken up heat, vast amounts of heat. If this happens, the water column expands and this leads to sea level rise. And we have measured a sea level rise since 1900 on the order of 20 centimeters in the global average. About 10 centimeters arise from the thermal expansion effect, okay? So by the, from the fact that the ocean has taken up heat and expands. Now, global warming also leads to ice melt. And we have basically two types of ice that impact the ocean. One is sea ice. If you look uh, into the Arctic, uh, we see that the sea ice has retreated very quickly during the recent decades. Satellite measurements have started uh, around uh, 1978. And since then, the sea ice, the Arctic sea ice, has retreated by approximately 30%. Okay? Uh, this does not affect sea level because the ice is already floating in the ocean. However, if land ice melts, and this is happening, ice on Greenland, for instance, then the meltwater will wind up in the ocean, and this will cause additional sea level rise. And the other 10 centimeters of sea level rise that we have measured since 1900 actually comes from the ice melt, so from the melt of the mountain glaciers, but also uh, increasingly from the melt of Greenland and the Antarctic ice sheet. And uh, for many decades, it was actually the thermal expansion that dominated the sea level rise. But now, during the last years, it is already the ice melt, the land ice melt, that dominates uh, uh, sea level rise and contributes more than half uh, to the current rise. Uh, this is uh, expected to further 
accelerate. But also sea level rise is not uniform. We see a lot of regional variations uh, during the last uh, decades. Uh, the region that has experienced experience the largest sea level rise is the Western Tropical Pacific. Uh, there, sea level has risen about three times faster than the global average. On the other side of the Tropical Pacific, sea level hasn't really risen. And the reason for this uh, uh, major difference in sea level rise across the Tropical Pacific is the change in the winds. So the winds across the Pacific equator have intensified. This piled up a lot of warm water in the west. Okay, that caused uh, sea level to rise. Okay, while this warm water actually is missing in the east, and this is uh, why uh, there isn't hardly any sea level rise during the last decades in the eastern tropical Pacific. Now, uh, we have seen there are two consequences of uh, global warming. One is the warming of the ocean, and, and this by itself is, is a problem. Corals, for instance, uh, can't really uh, survive if there will be a sustained warming in excess of, say, 1.5 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, so the warming by itself is a major threat uh, to the marine ecosystems. We have seen that sea level has risen, and this uh, will continue, but there is another problem that we refer to as the other climate problem, and this is that the oceans not only take up heat, but they also take up carbon dioxide, CO2. And uh, this must automatically, keep automatically lead to ocean acidification. So the oceans become more acidic if they take up carbon dioxide. Dioxide. So that's a fundamental uh, uh, chemical reaction that we can't avoid. So as long as we emit carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, a certain fraction of that will always go into the ocean, and this will uh, uh, lead to acidification. This also can be very dangerous to the marine ecosystems because, on the one hand, uh, if the water becomes more acidic, uh, this can be harmful to, to many uh, uh, marine uh, species. But on the other hand, uh, the uptake of carbon by the ocean also leads uh, to diminishing uh, carbonate concentrations in the oceans. And this is basically uh, what uh, uh, calcifying organisms, as we say, need to build their shells, their skeletons, and so on. Corals, for instance, uh, they uh, need to build skeletons. Uh, and you know, uh, if the carbonate uh, isn't available uh, uh, anymore, then they can't uh, do it, and they need to produce or uh, use more energy and, and so on. So in, in the end, uh, they will probably no longer be able uh, to, to build the structures uh, they desperately need. And this then, uh, in turn, will cause uh, a loss of biodiversity and uh, so on. So how uh, will uh, the ocean state evolve in, in the future? And uh, one of the great uh, uh, oceanographers, uh, Roger Well, once said that we are carrying out a giant uh, geophysical experiment with our uh, uh, system, and uh, I would like to stress this because there are uncertainties. We can't really compute everything. Uh, our models are not perfect. Our data is is not perfect, and certainly uh, not enough. But uh, if we uh, investigate uh, what the models predict, uh, then we see uh, that on the one hand. Uh, the temperature of the planet and also the temperature of the oceans will continue to rise uh, if uh, we uh, will experience something like an uh, 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 accelerating uh, climate change. Okay, if there won't be any climate uh, protection, then we will have an additional warming in the global average of four or five, maybe six degrees. This will, will lead uh, to a complete loss uh, or, or of tropical uh, corals. Sea level will rise uh, by an additional 
one meter by the end of the century, but you know, with strong regional variations, but how exactly these regional variations uh, will be, this is really hard uh, to predict because you would have to predict also the change in ocean uh, circulation. And finally, uh, acidification will continue. We will, in the, in the worst case scenario, uh, have uh, pH values by which we measure the acidity uh, or of the sea water well below uh, a value of eight. And uh, well, we believe that if this really happens, uh, uh, many marine ecosystems will be endangered and uh, uh, biodiversity uh, will dramatically decline in response to this uh, huge acidification. And this would be an acidification that we haven't experienced for many, many million years and it will be at least unprecedented in man's history.